this is Bryce Button, Director of Product Marketing at AJA Video Systems, and I'm very pleased to chat to you today about a few great new announcements we've made in the last week. We've introduced three new products, and we have updated some firmware for our very popular Keeper Ultra 12G, 4K, and multi-channel HD recorder. So in terms of the overall ecosystems that we're talking about here, our products address 12G SDI workflows, which allow single cable operation for 4K Ultra HD and handles obviously HD alongside that. Uh, IP, in the sense of digital audio over IP and integrating them into your SDI video streams or disembedding audio to uh, digital audio over IP using the Dante ecosystem. A new OG Roy SDI, which is a open gear card that does image extraction from 3G SDI sources and delivers that extraction to both SDI and HDMI, allowing you to do all sorts of great things, rotating images for vertical screens, even doing frame rate conversions when you're trying to bring a range of different sources into the same frame rate. Um, so that's the outlying concept and the big announcement is our Bridge Live product. So let's start with that. Bridge Live is a one RU device that you can put into a rack. And what it has is it has four uh, 12G SDI ports, which are capable, of course, of taking in multiple channels for HD workflows. And or you can use a single port for 4K Ultra HD. Uh, or utilize those four ports if you happen to have quad 3G SDI workflows for 4K. And what we're doing is we're allowing you to bridge from SDI to and back from compressed codec streams. So what you're able to do with this product, for instance, is you could take a source, you could take multiple HD sources, you can connect into the bridge live, and you'll be able to stream out using either MPEG-2 transport stream, H.264, HEVC, and even JPEG-2000. When you go to the cinema today, you're basically watching JPEG-2000, for instance. So it covers a wide range of quality levels, a wide range of codecs. It also comes with a lot of great transport support, including SRT, which stands for Secure Reliable Transport. And for those doing productions, that's a big one. It helps ensure that your signal's not gonna be hijacked by someone, that kind of thing. You can get them directly from where you are to where you need it to go. And this is bi-directional. So you can be encoding, you can be decoding, you can be transcoding, uh, and you can send signals simultaneously, in the case of HD, backwards and forwards at the same time, which is great for the remote production workflow needs that are now fairly a constant requirement for so many of us that are still continuing production, right? So this is a extremely flexible device. It's easy to control remotely because it's got a great GUI served through the web so you can get on any browser, you can control it. And you can deliver to all sorts of streaming platforms, common social media platforms, CDNs, AWS, it's up to you. And even from a single source, let's say you've got a program stream, you could take that in and you can send out uh, ABR ladder profiles. What that means is basically adaptive bitrate files, which are designed so that the end user receives a signal that works for the amount of bandwidth they have available. Uh, the signals can also have ad insertions for OTT needs. So you've got a live event, sports going on right now, for instance, you've got a breakaway to ads. You can do ad insertions, you can do uh, CC, right, closed captioning. You can affect the signal somewhat with some basic video processing. Um, you can also do audio control in terms of gain, that kind of thing. So it's an extremely flexible device and it's designed for a range of workflows, whether you're adding OTT services on top of a typical broadcast you do, whether you are remote collaborating, you've got editors in different locations, and you're trying to find an efficient way to move the signal backwards and forwards and then to and from SDI needs, um, whether you're backhauling, so instead of paying high satellite costs, for instance, if you're doing news, this can be a great way to efficiently move your signal 
across the public internet, and that's the key thing. This is all using the public internet, um, and the latency is extremely low. So this is an exciting product. It builds upon the realities we're all dealing with right now with streaming, and it allows you to choose the codec profiles, the transport mechanisms, whether you're doing UDP, RTM, PS, et cetera, that works for what you need to achieve. So the second product, which also handles effectively uh, workflows that are gonna involve IP, is our new open gear card called the Open Gear or OG Dante 12 GAM. And what this card is, is it's an audio embedder, disembedder between 12G SDI and the Dante audio ecosystem. Now, if you're not familiar with Dante, what Dante is about is it's a standard from Ordinate that has been shared with many manufacturers. There's over 450 manufacturers around the planet right now that make Dante enabled products. And there's something like 2,500 devices. And what you're getting is you're getting uncompressed audio that can go across ethernet and you just need a one gig e port. So the standard port that most of us have on our laptops and computers today. And this allows you to integrate those audio streams into your SDI workflows or disembed audio from your SDI workflows into the Dante ecosystem. So you could be doing things right now whereby you take your digital audio software where you might be working with uh, mixing software at home. And instead of routing out to a typical audio routing device, you simply download the Dante virtual sound card software, for instance, and effectively your ethernet port is your IO and you direct it using Dante controller software and you can route that to this card or you can route from the card to your software. So this enables a ton of different workflows, whether you're recording bands for your church services at the moment, whether you're uh, creating sophisticated streams where you want to bring in audio from a range of different locations and embed it into your SDI for recording, whether you're playing the SDI materials out and you want to strip it out and send the sound to amplifiers, all sorts of things. So it's a very exciting product. And being in an open gear format, it means we can fit 10 of those into a typical open gear frame. So an OG XFR, for instance, from AJA, but there are many manufacturers that make open gear frames. And within a single chassis, a two RU chassis, you can fit 10 cards. And because each car can bridge 64 channels of audio at a time, that would amount to 640 channels inside one of these frames. So a ton of flexibility, a ton of density. And on the basic IOs here, you got two 12G SDI inputs independently coming in and two independently going out. So you can route, you can embed and disembed simultaneously. So it opens up a huge ecosystem. A lot of AV integrators are gonna find this to be a very exciting product. A lot of broadcast facilities that have started to embrace digital audio like this over IP, especially for bringing in voiceover artists who might be anywhere in the world will find that this is a great integration tool set. And being in the open gear format, it means you can put that in fly packs, you can put it in central facilities, et cetera. At the third product that we announced is the OG Roy SDI. This is another open gear card, again, compatible with a range of open gear frames that are out there from a range of manufacturers. And what it's designed to do is to take in a baseband 3G SDI source, so your HD materials, and then you can extract a portion of that image uh, and then deliver it to both 3G SDI and HDMI simultaneously. So this is great for all sorts of things. Uh, a key use scenario, for instance, is to rotate that horizontal image vertically. Uh, and that allows you to display your source on a vertical screen with a great amount of ease. Uh, you may want to take older SDI materials or there's a framing you don't like from the original source or off the camera, whatever it might be, and you can scale that up. So it's scaling it. It also allows you to effectively do frame rate conversion. So if you've got a range of different uh, sources and you use a few of these cards and they might be all coming at slightly different frame rates, you can standardize it for your project so all the outputs are going to the frame rate you desire and maybe 720 or 1080, whatever it may be. So very flexible card. 
So to cap off those first three products, as you can see, these are all capable of being controlled, configured from distance. They all have, in the case of open gear cards, dashboards, software support from ROS, uh, which you can use on any platform to control them. Uh, and, and then with Bridge Live, of course, you get the direct interface there over the internet with this web GUI. So the final item I'd like to talk about today is for a lot of your uh, viewers and users that are familiar with our Keeper Ultra products. And those Keeper Ultra products are, are digital recorders and, and playback devices. So for the latest and our premier product in this lineup, which is the Keeper Ultra 12G, what we've added with free version uh, two firmware, which you can download from aja.com today, uh, we've added basically Genlock free inputs. So when doing multi-channel recording of HD sources and with the Keeper Ultra 12G, you can be recording four sources at a time, uh, you'll be able to uh, bring in these sources without them necessarily having Genlock independently fed to them because we're providing frame sync support on the inputs, making it a lot easier and quicker to set up, get going, and bring all these sources in together for your recording needs. Another item that's been added is the ability to actually take in single channel mode where we're supporting 4K or Ultra HD. You can now basically gang four of these uh, Keeper Ultra 12 Gs together and we can insert effectively a VPID uh, metadata portion. You can insert a, a, a VPID metadata um, portion for 8K. And what that will do is each output signal along the 12G SDI going to a 8K display is effectively being told you are the top left, you're the top right, you're the bottom left, you're the bottom right. And it reconstitutes that image correctly in sync on that display. So not a lot of people are going to be in 8K today. This is obviously a item that's there to assist you as you move into those 8K workflows in the future. We do have the Olympics that are out there that will return at some point here. And there's gonna be a lot of 8K workflows going on for those Olympics. So across the board here, effectively what we're doing is we're saying, when it comes to point-to-point -point technologies, which is what SDI is about, a cable that gets you from place A to place B, maybe it goes into a router, simplify it with 12G SDI because that can handle your 4K, your Ultra HD across a single cable. And right now, the less troubleshooting people have to do when they're working with smaller crews for you know, productions that are in place, or even if you're on the reception end working at home, a facility, et cetera, the less troubleshooting you have to deal with, the better. Um, we're talking about IP with all of these great new solutions, right, where we're offering you a simple solution for digital audio and integration into your video workflows with the OG Roy SDI. And finally, Bridge Live, that's really tacking everything that our industry and many other industries are having to deal with right now, utilizing the public internet to get video communications to and from locations for entertainment, for commercial purposes, for um, live events, virtual live events. And this is wonderful. You know, the one, you've always got to look for the positive in the negative scenario. This is obviously a tough time for the entire industry, for this country and many others. So what we can take away from this is this particular environment has actually helped this type of development that was always in motion. Uh, the industry has always been moving towards utilizing IT and IP frameworks for, for video. Uh, but in these current circumstances, that need, that desire, those capabilities are even more important. So we're hoping that you'll find great use cases for these products. And if you want to learn more, simply go to aja.com. You'll be able to look at the product pages. And we also keep a range of solution pages. So you can look at the HDR page. You can look at 12G SDI. And you can learn a lot more about these ecosystems and how to make the most of them.